Shopee sellers, my name is Claudine and this is the Shopee University Advanced Class. Hi Shopee sellers, welcome to Lesson 4 of the Advanced Class. So today we will be discussing about troubleshooting logistics concerns. So since we are in the e-commerce industry, of course, you as sellers would have to deal with shipping out and delivery of items. So kailangan natin mag-coordinate sa mga logistics providers ni Shopee. Uh, since that is the case, of course, sometimes makaka-experience tayo ng certain problems. And because of that, kailangan alam natin kung paano i-address yung mga ganong klaseng concerns para maging mas smooth yung process natin ng shipping out. So for today, we will discuss certain requests and escalations that you can raise to Shopee whenever you encounter these kinds of problems. So we will be discussing about follow-up pickup, follow-up delivery, expedite RTS or return to seller items, order status issue and manual settlement, payment status inquiry, complaint or request to couriers, pouch request, proactive penalty exemption, and lastly, yung ating product issues. So before we start, I would just like to remind everyone that we have a Seller Operational Concerns Form or what we call Form Stack. Ito yung uh, escalation form na available exclusively for managed sellers. So if you are a managed seller at wala pa kayo nitong form, ask your account manager for the link so that you can start escalating concerns. Kung meron naman tayo dito mga unmanaged sellers na nanonood ng ating broadcast for this webinar, the process is still applicable to you, but instead of using the form stack, you can just contact customer service. But the process is the same, the proof and the things that we require, the details are all the same. So going back to our seller operational concerns form, kailangan po pag nagre-raise tayo ng concerns, it's one form per courier per request. So for example, maka-experience tayo ng follow-up pickup issues for both JNT Express and Standard Delivery. Dalawang form po yung i-request natin. One follow-up pickup request for JNT and one follow-up pickup request for Standard Delivery. So hindi tayo pwede mag-raise ng same follow-up pickup concerns if different couriers. Same goes if magkakaiba yung concern natin. So for example, ang reklamo natin kay JNT Express is follow-up delivery and follow-up pickup. So, magkaibang uh, request din po siya. So, magkaibang concern form. One follow-up delivery and one follow-up pickup request. Next is refrain from submitting duplicate forms. So, mas makakatagal po to sa process kasi mas maraming workload yung uh, agents natin na sasagot. So, please, kung nakapag-submit na tayo ng form, wag na po natin siyang isubmit ulit because we can see it. And you can also receive a confirmation email that we have received your request. Next, if you have to attach more than one photo for a question, include all photos in a zip file and upload the zip file. So, kailangan pag inattach natin yung documents, naka-zip siya kasi walang option to upload multiple photos. If ever naman po wala tayong pang-zip ng file, um, kung hindi natin siya ma-download, pwede natin siyang i-compile sa Word document. So, i-arrange natin lahat ng photos doon and then yung Word file yung i-upload natin. Next is, take note that forms submitted beyond office hours, which is 7 o'clock p.m., will be processed during the next day, starting at 10 a.m. So, yung office hours po natin is 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So, anything na lumampas ng 7 p.m. when you escalate, sa next day na po siya masasagot ng agents natin. And lastly, please raise issues within 25 days after being tagged as delivered, cancelled, or returned. So these are what we call end statuses. Kapag kasi sa Shopee system namin, ito yung tatlong statuses na nakatag na yung orders ninyo, hindi na natin siya pwedeng baguhin. So starting those three statuses, tayo magka-count ng 20 days for your concerns to be valid. Any concern raised after this period will no longer be entertained. So, please um, please be aware of that 25 days para hindi po tayo ma wala ng chance to raise our concerns. Okay now, so we will proceed to how to use form stack. So, of course, you have your links from your account managers. Just click it to access the form and then fill out the basic information. First would be the email address of your relationship manager or key account manager. So, kung sino man po yung account manager ninyo, ask for their email address and then put it in the first 
entry kasi doon din i-email yung account managers nyo para naka-loop in sila doon sa concern ninyo and they can follow up kung sino man yung assigned doon sa case. So, this is very important. Make sure natin na tama yung email address na malalagay natin. The same goes for the email address of the seller. So, kung ano yung email address na ilalagay nyo dito, doon send yung updates for the request that you made. So, make sure that it's also correct. Next is Shopee username. So, make sure po na username yung ilalagay natin dito and not the shop name. Kasi yung username, wala siyang space and other characters. So, make sure na yung username yung ilalagay natin dito kasi that is the identifier that we use to search for your account. Next is select the shipping courier of the order that you are reporting. So, for example, you want to request for follow-up pickup. Ano yung courier ng order na gusto mong i-follow-up pickup? Is it GoGo Express, JNT Express, Standard Delivery, or Ninja Band? So, just select whichever it is. So, remember again yung ating reminder from a while ago, one form per courier tayo. Next is select the concern that you want to report. Kapag naman kinlik nyo yung please state your operations concern, lalabas na doon lahat ng types of requests that we can ask from Shopee. So, pili lang po tayo ng isa. Again, one form per concern. So, after you select yung concern, automatically lalabas na sa baba kung ano yung details na kailangan natin i-fill out. So, it will be different per each issue and we will discuss each one right now. So, for, first off is follow-up pick-up. So, as you can see on your screens, when you click on the follow-up pickup issue, may lalabas na kailangan yung iselect kung anong type of follow-up pickup yon. So, later on, we will discuss what are the types. So, after selecting the type of follow-up pickup, kailangan nyo naman ibigay yung list of order IDs na gusto nyo i-follow up. So, uh, when entering the list of order IDs, kailangan naka-enter siya. Hindi pwede magkakadikit kasi hindi natin siya mababasa. Hindi yun magbabasa ng system natin. So, like what you see on your screens, kailangan naka-enter siya or kung na-arrange nyo na yun from the Excel file, i-copy-paste na lang natin in the order that you see in the screen. So, for the types of follow-up pickup, yung first natin is no 3PL pickup. Ibig sabihin nito, walang ma-pickup si 3PL at all. So, there are three reasons. First is rider no-show. So, rider no-show, ibig sabihin nito, walang rider na nagpunta sa bahay ninyo. Pwedeng kinontak niya kayo or hindi niya kayo kinontak at all. Basta walang dumating na rider for that certain day na naka-arrange tayo ng pickup. Next is vehicle capacity issue. Same as with the first one, pwedeng may nag-contact sa inyo or wala, pero ang excuse ni rider is hindi na kasha yung parcels ninyo, yung packages ninyo doon sa vehicle na dala nila. And the next one is rider did not come back. So, pwedeng si rider dumaan siya sa bahay natin for the first time just to inform us na, okay, babalik po ako later, ma'am or sir, and then ipipick up ko yung items ninyo. Pero, hindi na siya bumalik. So, you can select that to uh, let us know kung mayroon bang rider na nagsabi sa inyo na babalik sila or hindi para at least masabihan din natin yung riders natin. Next is partial pickup. So, compared to the first one, ito namang partial pickup, merong na-pickup sa shops natin, pero hindi lahat. So, kung 25 orders yung naka-select for pickup today, and then 10 orders lang yung pinickup ni rider, then ibig sabihin, meron pang 15 na kailangan tayong i-follow up. So, you can either report vehicle capacity issue, kung hindi na-pickup yung the rest of the parcels, kasi hindi na kasha sa van, or sa truck, or sa motorcycle ni rider, or Pwede rin naman na hindi na binalikan ni Ryder yung items natin. So, Ryder did not come back ulit siya. And the last one is pouch issue. So, tatandaan po natin na yung ating mga couriers ay naka-own packaging na except for um, standard delivery. So, standard delivery is own packaging pero nagbibigay pa rin po siya ng free pouches. So, the only time that we can select no pouches as the reason for follow-up pickup is if we are reporting for standard delivery. So, pwedeng no pouches, walang binigay si standard delivery na pouches at all so that we can advise standard delivery to give us pouches the next time na pumunta sila sa house natin or sa warehouse natin. Pwedeng incomplete pouches kasi out of 100 orders, 50 lang yung binigay sa atin na pouches so we can follow up na when you go to this seller, 50 pouches yung kailangan mong dalin or more para may extra. 
And then next is late arrival of pouches. So this can happen especially kung may campaigns tayo. So kung may lack of pouches kasi hindi natin mafulfill yung orders especially kapag may same day pickup. So you can select this option kung yung pouches niyo ay dumating after 1 o'clock p.m. on the date of the campaign. Okay, next is follow-up delivery. So, just a trivia, yung follow-up delivery natin for the past 3 months, yung may pinakamataas na number of escalations. So, let's check out what follow-up delivery is all about. So, follow-up delivery is for packages that have not been received yet by the buyers by the estimated delivery time. So, kung mapapansin ninyo doon sa app, merong estimated time na marireceive dapat ni buyers yung kanilang orders. Pero if by that time, hindi pa rin nare-receive ni buyer masyado ng matagal, pwede nyo nang i-follow-up delivery. So, ang difference nito sa follow-up pickup is, for follow-up pickup, syempre nag-arrange na kayo ng orders, pero hindi pa siya nasuscoop ni rider or ni courier. For follow-up delivery naman, nakuha na siya ng courier natin, pero hindi pa siya nade-deliver kay buyer. So, for follow-up delivery, ang kailangan natin i-provide is yung list of order IDs. So, same goes with follow-up pickup. Kailangan ganito yung order niya. Naka-enter siya. So, just a reminder, meron tayong courier delivery lead time. Ito yung estimated duration na magde-deliver yung ating couriers depending on the location between the seller and the buyer. So, for example, for Metro Manila, meron tayong 4 to 6 days na pwedeng ibigay kay courier para hintayin ma-deliver yung items natin. Pero kung kunwari naman Metro Manila to Visayas, that takes a little longer, so 7 to 12 days. And mas mahaba siya, of course, kung Metro Manila to Mindanao. So, in this table, you will see kung gaano katagal magde-deliver si courier ng orders niya kay buyer. Medyo mas matagal lang siya ng konti for overseas uh, deliveries kasi it might take 2 weeks maximum. So, how do you compute for the estimated delivery time? So, as sellers, bilangin nyo kung ilang days yung kailangan nyo para mag-ship out ng item. So, if it's 2 days, that's 2 plus the courier delivery lead time. So, again, if it's Metro Manila, maximum 6 days. So, 6 days para makapag-deliver si courier and then 2 days para mag-arrange si seller. Then, 8 days maximum yung estimated delivery time para ma-receive ni buyer yung orders nila. So, this information is useful for you. Example, pag may mga buyers na nagtatanong, Ma'am or Sir, kailan ko po receive yung orders ko? So, you can let them know na ito yung estimated delivery time. Okay, next one is Expedite RTS. RTS stands for Return to Seller. So, ito yung mga items na ni-reject ni buyer na i-receive or uh, in some cases, improper packaging. So, pagdating niya sa warehouse, binabalik siya ni courier sa seller to prevent any more damages. So, for expedite RTS, ang kailangan lang din natin ay list of order IDs. So, same as with follow-up pickup and follow-up delivery, we just need the order IDs in this order para mabasa siya ng system. Okay, so meron tayong two types of um, RTS that you can raise to Shopee. And you don't have to select the type kasi kami na yung mag-check for you. So, first one is not yet returned. So, pwede nyo siyang erase sa amin as long as yung status niya is returning or uh, nakalagay sa app na yung item ninyo is returning pero nasa warehouse pa. So, as long as the status is not yet returned, pwede nyo pa siyang i-follow up sa amin sa Shopee. So, Ang gagawin ni Shopee is to ask the courier to return the package within 5 to 7 days. So, bibigyan natin sila ng uh, timeline and then kailangan nilang ma-meet yun. Kapag hindi nila na-deliver within that time na sinabi natin, possible na ma-charge sila for claims. Babayaran po nila tayo para dun sa item. And then another one is meron tayong certain cases na sa app natin nakatag na returned na yung item pero sinasabi ni seller na wala pa siyang nare-receive. So careful tayo for this one kasi returned is an end status already. Ibig sabihin po nun, magra-run na yung 25 days after matag yung 
returned. So, kailangan the moment na makita nyo yung returned yung status sa seller center and then wala pa tayong nare-receive na returned item, kailangan na natin siyang i-report agad sa Shopee para makahingi tayo kay courier ng proof of delivery. So, hinga natin siya ng proof of delivery just to make sure na meron silang binalik. And then, if wala silang ma-provide na proof of delivery, we will file that for claims and babayaran po tayo ni courier. In some cases, mag aas tayo ng ID kasi yung proof of delivery na binibigay ni courier is a signature of the seller. So, kaya tayo humihingi ng ID is because we want to compare kung parehas yung signature ninyo sa ID at yung signature na nakasign doon sa proof of delivery. So, if it's the same, ibig sabihin nun, um, meron someone from your warehouse or kayo po mismo nag-sign na nabalik na sa inyo yung item. So, careful din tayo when signing. At kung hindi naman same yung signatures, possible din na makapag-file tayo for claims. Okay, next one is order status issue update and request for manual settlement. So, uh, when you click on order status issue update, may lalabas dyan na types of order status issues. So again, just choose the type of issue that is applicable for your concern and then state the order IDs as well. So, ano ba yung mga types of order status issues? So, meron tayong mga cases na na-pick up na yung item, pero ang tagging niya sa seller center is still pending for pickup. So, ibig sabihin nagre-reflect sa seller center na hindi pa siya shipped. We also have uh, shipped na yung ating orders, pero yung status sa seller center is pickup retry or pickup failed. So, in those instances, kailangan natin siyang i-report sa Shopee. So, any order status issue na hindi updated, i-report natin siya sa Shopee para at least mahabol natin siya before ma-cancel yung order. So, for this, ang kailangan natin i-provide the proof is proof of pickup. So, since we are reporting na, hi Shopee, na-pick up na po yung item natin, kailangan natin mag-provide ng proof na na-handover na natin siya sa courier. So, for proof of pickup, you can provide a photo of the item with readable airway bill. So, kailangan talaga nag-take tayo ng photos bago tayo nag-ship out para for these kinds of cases, meron tayong mabigay na proof. We can also send a photo of the pickup receipt or run sheet. So, whenever our couriers pick up, meron silang binibigay na pickup receipt or run sheet and then this is what we can use as proof. Next is for manual settlement for COD orders. Pag sinabi nating manual settlement, uh, ibig sabihin kasi nito yung order is na-cancel na siya. So, na-cancel na yung order pero na-deliver yung item kay buyer. So, in this instance, since we said a while ago that cancelled is already an end status, hindi na natin siya pwedeng i-change sa system ni Shopee or sa seller center. So, for those cases, kailangan na lang natin bayaran si seller if COD yung order niya. Kasi kapag non-COD, automatic magre-refund na yung payment kay buyer. So, we have to get the payment from the buyer for those cases. Okay? So, for proof of delivery, we just need a screenshot of conversation with the buyer stating that he or she already received the order. And kailangan dun sa chat is merong visible order ID. So, um, we have here on screen some samples of the proofs that we need for each type of issue. So, first one is sample proof of pickup. On the left side, meron tayong airway bill. So, again, kailangan readable siya. Nakikita yung tracking number and the other details. Kailangan lang clear siya para at least when we send it to the courier, makikita nila kung anong parcel yung kiniklaim natin na na-pickup na. We also have the pickup handover form. So this is an example from Shopee Express. Nakalagay dyan yung name ng seller, yung signature ng rider na na-pickup niya na yung items, and the number of items that were picked up on a certain day. And this one naman is an example of the proof of delivery. So makikita nyo sa chat na inask or tinanong ni seller si buyer kung na-receive na nila yung item nila. And then si buyer, sinabi niya na, opo, seller, na-receive ko na yung item. So uh, kailangan nyo lang screenshot to, yung acknowledgement ni buyer na na-receive niya na yung order kahit cancelled. And this will serve as the proof of delivery already. Okay, next is payment status in free. For payment status inquiry, basically, ang gusto lang natin gawin is tanungin si Shopee kung nabayaran ka na ba for this certain order. 
So, ang kailangan natin dito is uh, to select the type of payment status entry na gusto natin. So, yung tinatanong ba natin na payment is for a parcel that was lost or it is for a uh, payment for refund. And then, actually, meron din isa pa which is ASF-ESF or shipping fee discrepancy but this will be discussed in the next lesson. So, abangan po natin yan sa lesson number 5. Okay, so for payment status entry, kailangan nyo lang iselect which type of uh, payment yung gusto natin itanong kay Shopee and then i-enter ulit natin yung order IDs na gusto natin i-enquire. So, uh, just to make sure na alam natin and i-refresh yung memory natin, actually, pwede natin i-check kung na bigay na sa atin ni Shopee yung payment for certain orders through seller balance. So, on your screens, you can see na pwede tayong pumunta sa seller center and then under finance, you can select my balance to check kung nabayaran na pa tayo ni Shopee. So, of course, since this is dealing with money, kailangan natin i-enter yung password natin to verify that we are the owner of the account. Ayan. So, select the date that you want to uh, check in terms of the payment. So, kayo po yung magde-decide yan kung ano yung file or uh, file na gusto nyo i-access or yung gusto natin i-access na certain dates sa my balance. Ayan. So, pwede nyo siyang i-export through Excel kung mas nadadalian din kayo doon. Okay. So, for wallet adjustment for refunds or from claims issues. So, claims is yung mga missing, wrong, or damaged orders. Ito po, pag na-approve yung claims issues natin, sa seller balance siya magre-reflect. So, kapag naka-receive tayo ng update from the email or from our account manager na approved na for claims yung submit natin, marireceive natin yung payment on the subsequent Tuesday or Thursday after the claim has been approved. So, for example, today is Friday and then in-update tayo ni account manager or nakita natin sa email na ang sabi ni support is that we will receive the, uh, the that the claims is approved on that Friday. So, yung payment, marireceive natin siya either Tuesday or Thursday of the following week. Next is for lost parcels. So, lost parcels, uh, just to be clear, ito po yung tinatag ni Shopee as lost. So, hindi ito yung feeling lang natin nawawala. Kailangan confirm siya by Shopee as lost. And then, uh, automatic, marirefund din siya sa atin through seller balance. So, once we see in our seller center that the item is declared lost by Shopee, we can expect the payments to be credited 1 to 2 days after loss tagging. So, iba po yung case if si courier yung nag-inform sa atin na lost, pero sa Shopee hindi pa siya updated. Kasi, kailangan pa natin mag-present ng proof from the courier na na-lost na yung items natin. So, this is an example. Um, as you can see on your screen, si Ninja Van mismo, yung nag-email kay seller na itong certain order na to ay nawala. So, for us to be able to update in the Shopee system, isend nyo lang po sa amin yung screenshot ng pag-contact sa inyo ng courier so that we can check with them and we can credit the money to you. Okay, so... For ASF, ESF, or actual shipping fee minus estimated shipping fee payment discrepancies, pwede nyo rin po siyang i-report sa Shopee. So, kung gusto nating i-appeal kung bakit mas mataas yung shipping fee na, sinet, uh, na kinredit sa atin ni courier, pwede rin po natin siyang gawin. So, what we need is the list of affected order IDs, the tracking numbers, so ma-access natin yung lahat sa seller center, Quantity of items affected. So, kung kunwari, nag-report tayo ng one order and then within one order, merong tatlong items. Yun yung ide-declare natin under quantity. Next is the declared dimensions in centimeters. So, yan po yung length, width, and height ng item. Make sure that we, when we are measuring, kasama po yung packaging. And also, the actual weight in kilograms. So, meron tayong four pictures na kailangan i-provide whenever we are appealing for ASF, ESF discrepancies. So, we have three photos showing the actual uh, dimensions of the product being measured. So, yung length, width, and height ng items natin being measured with a measuring tape and another photo for the item being measured for its actual weight. So, make sure lang po natin na yung photos natin ay clear at nakikita mismo yung measurement kasi yun na yung proof natin. Yun yung ipapakita natin kay courier na tama yung dineclare natin sa seller center. Mali yung kinredit sa akin ni courier. So, kailangan ibalik nyo sa amin yung extra na chinarch nyo. 
Next naman is complaint to courier. So, pag sinabi natin complaint to courier, ibig sabihin meron tayong mga certain problems with our riders. Siguro dahil uh, nag-display sila ng rude behavior, kaya gusto natin silang ireklamo or gusto natin mag-request ng change ng rider. Pwede rin tayo mag-request ng change in pickup schedule kung ia-approve ni courier or change and pick up vehicle. So, any types of requests can be forwarded to the 3PL pero subject to approval siya. So, when you select on complaint to courier, iselect natin kung ano yung type of request that we want. And then, right below that, you will see the details of the complaint or request. So, for example, ang sinelect natin na request is rude rider behavior. Pwede natin i-elaborate sa baba kung ano ba yung naging problem natin with the rider. So, pinagsalitaan ba tayo ng masama? Meron ba siyang extra charges na hinihingi? Or si rider na to lagi hindi pumupunta sa bahay natin? So, make sure na maintindihan ni courier kung ano ba yung reklamo natin or request by elaborating in the details of the complaint or request. And then lastly is enter a sample order ID. So kung kunwari nga ang reklamo natin is hindi nagpipick up si rider sa shop natin, kumuha tayo ng sample order ID. Hindi kailangan lahat, kahit isa lang, okay lang yun. So hingi tayo ng isang order ID and then yun yung ilalagay natin sa sample affected order IDs. Para pag binigay natin siya kay courier, iti-check niya kung napick up ba tong item na to at or hindi. And then, we can verify, we can um, forward that request to the courier. Okay, next is for pouch request. So again, I just want to remind everyone again that we have own packaging for all of our items. But the only courier na pwede kayo mag-request ng pouches is Standard Delivery or SPX. So, if other couriers yung pinagre-requesta natin ng pouches, such as JNT or Gogo Express or Ninja Van, since they are all own packaging, hindi na po tayo pwedeng mag-request through Shopee. So, if ever we need pouches from those couriers, we can request directly from the riders or the branches. But for Shopee Express, for standard delivery, we can request through the Seller Operational Concerns form. So, ang kailangan lang po natin i-provide is number of pouches that you need. So, ilang pouches ba yung kailangan natin to pack our orders? And then, your address. So, dito natin ipapadala yung pouches. Make sure it's correct. Reason for requesting pouches. So, is it because uh, nagkulang tayo because camp campaigns ngayon, nagkaroon kayo ng order search and so on. So, iselect lang po natin yung reason for requesting pouches. And then, uh, magbigay din tayo ng sample order ID. So, for example, we have 100 orders na kailangan natin ipak at wala pa siyang pouches. Hindi naman natin kailangan ilagay yung 100 orders na yun. Magbigay lang tayo ng sample order ID na book na so that we can prove to Shopee na, hey, meron akong order na nakabook sa inyo and wala pa kong pouches. So, we are requesting for you to give us pouches under standard delivery. So, some guidelines only for uh, standard delivery for requesting pouches. So, first is couriers base the number of pouches to be distributed from the number of orders that the seller has booked for pickup during that certain day. So, for example, I am the seller, tapos meron akong 100 pending orders na ship out ko. Pwede ako mag-request ng 100 pouches, pero I have to make sure na yung 100 pouches na yun ay nakabook sa seller center. Kasi kapag hindi siya nakabook, hindi siya makikita ng standard delivery. So, hindi niya i-approve yung pouch request natin. Kasi for example, ang binook lang natin doon is 20 orders. Kapag nag-request tayo ng pouches, 20 pouches lang yung bibigay sa atin ni standard delivery. Kasi nga, 20 lang yung nakabook. So, make sure that when you are requesting pouches, the number of pouches being requested is the same or uh, at least the same with what is booked on seller center. So, si standard delivery magbibigay naman siya ng extra. Next is, Shopee will not entertain pouch requests for orders created on their own packaging channels except for standard delivery. So, a little bit more emphasis on that. 
And then next is do not use pouches given by a courier to fulfill the orders under another logistics provider. So kung si Standard Delivery or Shopee Express binigyan kayo ng orange pouches, hindi nyo yun pwedeng gamitin to fulfill orders for Ninja Van, for GNT, or Google Express. Kasi hindi rin nila yung tatanggapin. And the same goes if nakareceive tayo ng pouches from GNT or Google Express, huwag natin siyang gagamitin to fulfill our Shopee Express or Standard Delivery orders. So, medyo strict po tayo dyan, but um, if you will use your own packaging, that's fine. So, kunwari, um, meron kayong sarili niyong brand and sarili niyong packaging, that's fine. As long as hindi pouches ng ibang courier yung gagamitin natin. Okay. And then, last reminder is for sellers who receive advanced pouches for campaigns, make sure na sa campaign natin siya gagamitin. So, especially for large double-double campaigns, yung mga major double-double campaigns natin such as 6, 6, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, magbibigay tayo ng advanced pouches for our sellers kasi gusto natin maging prepared sila on those days. Pero sometimes, ang ginagawa kasi ng sellers natin kapag nakareceive ng pouches, yun na yung ginagamit nila for the normal days of fulfillment. So, on the day of the campaign, nauubusan na sila ng pouches, mas hindi nila na fulfill yung orders from the campaigns. So, if that is the case, kung kulang po tayo ng orders for the pre-campaign orders, mag-request na lang po tayo ng pouches kesa gamitin natin yung naka-allot dapat for the campaign days. Okay, next one is proactive penalty exemption. For proactive penalty exemption, ito po yung gusto natin mag-appeal ng penalty points bago pa siya mag-reflect sa account natin. So, for example, um, naka-experience tayo ng no pickup from the courier, pero alam natin na hindi natin siya kasalanan. Maybe tinag ni courier na item not ready yung items natin, tapos hindi na siya na-pick up at all. So, NFR yon. Or kung na-fulfill natin yung orders, pero late na siya kasi late din dumating yung courier, pwede natin siyang i-appeal para yung orders na yon hindi siya masama sa penalty calculation. So, for that, ang kailangan nyo lang iselect is the reason for appealing for proactive penalty exemption and the list of affected order IDs. So, ano ba yung uh, reasons for requesting for, pro for proactive penalty exemption? So, first is courier fault. So, ito yung kiniklaim natin na na ship out ko naman yung orders on time or inarrange ko naman sila on time pero hindi dumating si courier or late na siya dumating. So, pwedeng uh, no pick up kasi walang pouches na dinala si standard delivery. No pick up kasi rider no show. No pick up kasi puno na yung vehicle ni rider or late pick up. So, those are some of the reasons under courier fault. Um, if applicable, meron din tayong mga COVID-related restrictions. So, in some cases, biglang nagde-declare ng lockdown sa mga barangay. Kaya hindi makapasok si courier. So, we can also report that. And lastly, ay yung mga unexpected na rate, of course. So, kailangan lang natin mag-provide ng proof na subjected yung shops natin to read so that we can approve the penalty exemption. So, guidelines for proactive penalty exemption since this is being uh, passed and approved to our regional headquarters, kailangan po isubmit natin siya before the deadline. So, sellers should submit the proactive penalty exemption request by Thursday at 1 p.m. So, yun na yung pinaka-deadline natin if gusto nating ma-process yung request for that week. So, request sent after Thursday at 1 p.m. will be processed the following week. Next reminder is for orders that have already incurred LSR or NFR, hindi na po natin siya pwedeng i-appeal. So, pag nakita nyo na meron ng penalty points sa shops natin, hindi na natin siya pwedeng i-proactive penalty exemption. Reactive penalty exemption na siya. So, you have to coordinate that with your account managers para ma-request ma kayo ng appeal for those penalty points. So, proactive penalty exemption is only to prevent your shops from having a penalty. And then, uh, next one is submitting a proactive penalty exemption request means that the orders are already late shipped or non-fulfilled and thus must uh, may not be allowed for pickup anymore. So, for example, nag-request tayo ng proactive penalty exemption for these 
10 orders kasi late na sila or hindi na sila na pick up ni courier. It doesn't mean na ipapa-follow up pick up natin sila. So kung ang concern natin is gusto natin ipa-follow up pick up, ang dapat na request na piliin natin is follow up pick up instead of proactive penalty exemption. Usually si seller, i-select niya lang yung proactive penalty exemption kapag wala nang days to ship. So this is just to appeal na I arrange my orders on time pero uh, hindi siya na pick up or late siya na pick up. And then lastly, this is subject to approval pa. So hindi ibig sabihin na nag-submit kayo ng request, automatic tatanggalin na natin yung orders na yon for penalty computation. Depende pa siya sa magiging approval ni regional headquarters. And then lastly, we have the product error. So I'm sure as sellers, you would know na Sometimes meron tayong glitches and especially kapag nag-overload yung platform natin ng buyers kapag campaigns, minsan makaka-experience tayo ng mga system glitches or errors. So in those cases, you can report it to us para magawa natin siya ng paraan. So what we would need is a description of the issue. So ano ba yung issue na na-encounter natin? Is it hindi tayo makapag-upload ng listing or makapag-edit ng listing? Hindi tayo makapag-mass arrange pickup? hindi tayo makapag-print ng airway bills or yung lumalabas sa mga uh, yung lumalabas sa orders natin is 1970 so that's what we call the 1970 error pwede natin siyang i-report kay Shopee so again just describe the issue and then take a screenshot or video of the error that we are experiencing so para mas madalian yung product team natin sa pag-resolve ng issues kailangan na bigyan natin sila ng sample na ito yung itsura niya kapag nag error Okay? And then, enter a sample affected order ID. So, for example, nga, hindi tayo makapag-arrange ng pick-up under this certain courier. Kunin natin yung kahit isang order ID para matest din natin kung bakit hindi siya gumagana on Shopee. So, we have a sample here of an error na na-encounter ni seller. Nagtatry siya mag-book ng pick-up sa app at sa web. Pero, as you can see, nakalagay na may server error. So, uh, this is valid kasi yung system mismo natin yung may problema. Pero kung ang nakalagay dito is uh, no available pickup days, it means lang na hindi kayo makapag-book ng order kasi nag na yung days to ship, tapos na siya. Kaya hindi tayo makapag-arrange ng pickup. So, make sure lang natin na yung error is being experienced because of a Shopee error and not because of seller fault. And then, kung pwede, mag-basic troubleshooting din muna tayo before reporting to Shopee. So those are some of the logistics concerns that you might face while selling on Shopee. In the next lesson, we will discuss how to escalate claims cases and ASF ESF discrepancies. So thank you so much for attending this session. If you want to have a copy of the material, we can send you handouts. But please make sure to fill out the feedback form. So yung mag fill out lang ng feedback form natin yung sasendan natin ng handout. So make sure that you scan the QR code para masend natin sa inyo yung handouts right after this training. So join our community if you want to get further updates from us. So you can join Shopee University on Facebook to scan the QR code. Here we have uh, games for you, other engagement activities, and you can also see seller posts. For Shopee Viber, this is where we also announce yung mga new features natin and other announcements such as merong, if there mga holidays, ano yung DTS extension natin for those, some um, updates for products, prohibited items, and so on. And lastly, we also have a WeChat group that you can join if you speak in Chinese and are more comfortable in raising your concerns and attending trainings in Chinese. Thank you so much, sellers, for attending this training. I hope that you learned a lot. I'll see you in the next training on escalating ASF-ESF discrepancies and claims issues. <music>